dear colleagues, good afternoon. First of all, I am very thankful to our friends uh, to, from St. Petersburg to participate in the White Night Forum. Today, I'd like to share some ideas as to neoadjuvant therapy of the primary ovarian cancer and maybe to uh, uh, to discuss with Professor Berlev the modalities that we have. Uh, m mostly we use two models, primary cytoreductive operation with adjuvant hemotherapy and now adjuvant hemotherapy plus interval cytoreduction and plus adjuvant polychemotherapy. Professor Berle has already mentioned the classical indication for neoadjuvant chemotherapy. In case of disseminated ovarian cancer, it's a comorbidity, high risk of uh, critical postoperative complications, and one of the indications, impossibility to achieve optimal debulking. Classical regimen of treatment of an ovarian cancer uh, with neoadjuvant chemotherapy. I am the head of a surgical department. I am not going to talk about chemotherapy in my presentation. I'd like to look at this approach from practical way. Recently, neoadjuvant chemotherapy with interval cytoreduction has been criticized severely. If uh, we had made decisions 15 years ago about uh, chemotherapy in advanced uh, ovarian cancer, the paradigm has been changed greatly. Now we have an extensive cytoreductive operations and Professor Berlev has mentioned this in his presentation. And our colleagues uh, from Minora's Can Memorial Cancer Center uh, achieving survival rate up to 72 months in case of full site reductions. Today, in surgical treatment of ovarian cancer, we stepped aside from the hysterectomy or with their um, avaria, uh, with the adnexes and uh, with the removal of the minor amentum. Now we, our surgery, according to retrospective and prospective trials, this large extensive surgery brings up uh, very good results and survival rate much longer comparing to non-optimal debulking surgery. In fact, the share of optimal site reductions in different clinics throughout the world ranging from 15 to 90 percent. It, def it uh, relates to different factors. Apart from this, we know that according to our foreign and Russian studies, non-optimal uh, site reduction with the falling adjuvant chemotherapy doesn't have advantages comparing to near adjuvant chemotherapy plus site reduction as to the overall survival. Uh, these data speak about the fact that not always shall we uh, perform site reduction as a first stage of treatment if we can't do this as a complete site reduction. Very interesting data uh, showed GLJ-152. It was shown that even in the case of full and optimal site reductions, uh, when CD was performed earlier, earlier in 25 percent uh, of cases, sir, uh, uh, the lesions, small lesions, or one, two centimeters were found. It uh, spoke about the fact that these other reductions, so they were not complete. Today, we don't have 
highly effective predictors of optimal or full site reduction. If we are talking about uh, the radiation methods of diagnosis and other tests, diagnostic tests that we perform preoperatively, this operation, this situation doesn't allow us to be completely clear as to the, whether or not we can do full uh, site reduction in case of advanced ovarian cancer. Diagnostic laparoscopy, and I'd like to support the words of Igor, it's effective, uh, justifiable, but unfortunately, it doesn't allow in all the cases to give us the answer about uh, the a possibility of uh, complete site reduction. Usually we use clinical guidelines in our day-to-day -day practice. If we uh, take uh, the ESGO guidelines, we can see that for debulking surgery, there are no limits for debulking surgery. The surgical manipulations that we have never thought of, now they are standardized. Uh, we can uh, resect uh, plural solitary metastases, uh, uh, inguinal lymph nodes, axillary lymph nodes. As to non resectable criteria that are stipulated in these similar guidelines, uh, there are some conditions, uh, some <coughs> some exemptions. Everything uh, much depends on the qualification of the team. R guidelines, uh, they're usually laid down by the experts uh, with extensive experience in oncosurgery. But for practical use, each uh, surgeon has different criteria for resectability. And not always the primary uh, debulking surgery may be performed in this individual case by this individual surgeon. What else I'd like to say here? maybe to defend neoadjuvant chemotherapy with the interval site reduction. Primary debulking surgery, and much has been said about it, and it's propagated in different conferences and congresses, but this should be very well organized. As the previous presenter mentioned, it's a teamwork. It's an interaction of expert specialists uh, between uh, of different specializations. I am happy for Igor that he has such good friendly team, but in practice it's not easy to achieve to have this multidisciplinary team. The next point uh, that should be taken into account it's, of course, the database, uh, the documentation, the disease histories. We shall, to assess, we shall assess results of our surgery. Uh, these surgeries uh, can be performed only in uh, well technically equipped establishments. It's uh, one operation for one day. It takes up uh, the whole operating day. And uh, it's important to have uh, the technical equipment. It's a blood supply uh, unit should be interacted, should be involved. Anesthesis, uh, resuscitation unit. According to different trials, uh, their incidence rate of complications may be in primary site reduction may be 10 times higher comparing to interval, interval site reduction. And the complications uh, are very difficult to manage. 
It's a different issue. When we manage the complication, we prolong the time and a patient doesn't receive the following stage of uh, oncological treatment. It's a long hospital stay, long stay in ICU. Not each hospital has this kind of opportunities. A great Oh, we should ensure the logistic of the patient, the routine of patient. Uh, it might seem uh, very easy to realize, to implement, but practically it may be very difficult to achieve. If we are talking primary cytoreductive operations, if we are talking about disseminated ovarian cancer with multiple metastases in different parts of the abdomen, of course, uh, these operations are to be developed. They are to be developing not only in uh, singular centers uh, uh, with a very good survival rate, and we know that 14,000 patients suffering from ovarian cancer, they emerged. And 70% of them, these are the patients with the disseminated ovarian cancer. So uh, the one hospital can, can't handle this situation. Of course, uh, these operations are to be developed, but it's very difficult to realize. It's very difficult to reproduce and implement. We have very few experts, very few specialists who are capable and skilled to perform these operations, even in a multidisciplinary team. And of course, uh, it's a severe economic burden. It's in one oncological uh, center. If five operations are performed in one week, it's very difficult to imagine how the department uh, may function uh, under such uh, workload. And uh, this technology can't be widely spread now. It's technically impossible. As to talk about randomized trials, uh, four randomized trials uh, that were conducted, uh, they report about the fact that in majority of cases uh, that overall survival uh, rates in case of uh, primary and interval site reductions, uh, they are comparable. But at the time and uh, their Efforts uh, in case of primary uh, site reductions are much higher. Uh, these trials, uh, they were severely criticized, uh, mentioning about uh, the uh, incorrect design, uh, not qualified surgeons. Now we have been waiting for the results of the clinical trial trust. Everybody has been waiting in 2024 for these results to be revealed. But what will happen? We don't know if the advantages of primary site reduction will be proved effective. It won't entail uh, the wide application of these operations in day-to-day -day practice. Uh, this process uh, uh, will be discussed for a long time. All in all, the advantages of neoadjuvant chemotherapy are not doubtful. Low postoperative complications, low uh, mortality rate, uh, the quality of life, uh, the low necessity to do visceral resections. But there are some disadvantages, technical difficulties, in case of uh, desmoplasia, uh, chemo resistance, and uh, insufficient effect, uh, efficacy or in case of the large tumors. In this case, uh, primary site reduction is on the front. As to complications, it's a scorpion data that showed that in case of internal site reduction, in grade of three, four, 10 times low 
comparing uh, in case of primary site reduction. And the same is true for mortality rate. The data uh, that were presented on the basis of the database analysis of the USA, neoadjuvant chemotherapy, the frequency of the use of this regimen, it's shown that neoadjuvant chemotherapy is used more and more frequently. Maybe for this, uh, there are some justifiable reasons. But if you are talking about the Russian Federation, we won't uh, receive uh, this kind of a curve. Mostly, we will have the line at the level of 70, 80 percent, not more. The situation is changing as to implementation of cytoreductive operations, but all in all, cytodebulking therapy Maybe it's worth uh, oh, it worth talking about near adjuvant chemotherapy, uh, ensuring uh, the uh, proper intervals for interval site reduction.